What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including WWE treating Crown Jewel like WrestleMania, has John Cena actually finished up with WWE, a huge rumor concerning Randy Orton's return, a fired AEW name finds a new home, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. And also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Now as always we won't recap the matches but just look at the good, the bad and the downright ugly. As always we start off with the good as number one LA Knight confronts Paul Heyman. A last night's Smackdown kicked off with a confrontation between LA Knight and Paul Heyman and as expected it made for gripping and compelling TV. In the segment itself, LA Knight stated that he'll meet Roman Reigns in the ring next week on SmackDown to sign the contract for their next match at Crown Jewel. Whilst it would be nice to see Reigns on TV this week to build to the match, both LA Knight and Heyman did a great job in selling the anticipated matchup in Reigns' absence. Number 2. John Cena Shines John Cena's promo work since he returned to SmackDown has been stellar, and last night was no exception. Cena cut a passionate promo promising to prove the audience that he still has it. Cena was then interrupted by Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa before Jey Uso made a surprise appearance to without question one of the biggest pops of his entire career. It looks like Cena will face Sokoa in a singles match at Crown Jewel and as for Jey and Jimmy, it's unknown if the WWE will be rushing into the match as it was initially rumored for WrestleMania. Number 3. Smackdown vs Raw It looks like the WWE are slowly planting the seeds for a Smackdown vs Raw storyline. In a backstage segment, SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis would fine Raw star Jey Uso for appearing on the show and this was counteracted by Raw General Manager Adam Pearce stating that SmackDown star Jimmy Uso should be fined for appearing on Raw on Monday. The segment concluded with Aldis throwing both Jey and Pearce out of the building before Pearce declared, let the games begin. A Survivor Series is a month away so it's entirely possible that WWE are building towards a SmackDown vs Raw matchup. Number 4. The Presentation of the US Title WWE have done a masterful job in 2023 of presenting their secondary titles as valuable and credible and this continued last night. It feels like a big deal that Logan Paul has returned to WWE for the sole purpose of wanting to become US Champion and the promo exchange with Rey Mysterio last night, whilst awkward in parts, did its job in setting the stage for the Crown Jewel Showdown. Number 5. Bianca Belair Returns in the main event of SmackDown last night saw Io Sky defend her women's title against Charlotte Flair. The match was a satisfactory main event, but it would be nice to see Sky wrestle different women on the show. The most notable thing to come out of the match came in the aftermath as Bianca Belair made a highly anticipated return to WWE programming. Belair is currently advertised for Crown Jewel, and with Sky being advertised for a live event in the US on the same day, it's unlikely that Belair vs Sky is the plan. We'll have to wait and see what WWE have in store for Belair's creative direction. That was the good, what about the bad, as number 1, Dragon Lee loses. A Smackdown featured a tag team match pitting Dragon Lee and Cameron Grimes against Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Lee's team came out of the match with the L and there's some concern that WWE have committed to bringing Lee up to the main roster without a concrete creative plan in place. Nevertheless, WWE managed to protect Lee from taking the pinfall in the match, so hopefully he gets some type of meaningful storyline in the weeks to come. Now there was nothing downright ugly on last night's show as for most part it was a decent show that effectively added some much needed hype towards Crown Jewel in two weeks. What did you guys think of the blue brand last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now top story today takes a look at WWE treating Crown Jewel like Wrestlemania. Our top story today takes a look at an exciting report relating to the Crown Jewel event. The Crown Jewel card is shaping up with matches such as Roman Reigns vs LA Knight and Seth Rollins vs Drew McIntyre already confirmed. Now BWE on Twitter has offered some insight into what fans can expect for Crown Jewel in two weeks. They're planning something nice for Crown Jewel. I will share a few updates about activities as they treat the PLE as if it was a mania. WWE has always treated the Saudi shows as if they're a big deal, however in the early years they were prone to throw legends on the card in favor of current talent. Booking top matches such as Reigns vs LA Knight and Rey Mysterio vs Logan Paul is ultimately the way to go and it's hardly a surprise that the past few Saudi shows have received widespread praise from fans and critics alike. Next up is John Cena finished up with WWE. Now there could be some unfortunate news to share when it comes to John Cena's latest WWE run as it looks like it's finally coming to an end. Cena's last advertised TV appearance is set for next Friday and then Cena will work Crown Jewel. 
Fightful Select to provided some additional information when it comes to Cena's return. And that's what WWE certainly believes that Cena is finishing up after Crown Jewel, but they will definitely have him, at least through these appearances through October. He's set for tonight's SmackDown, he's set for next week's SmackDown, then after that it is question marks. After they're doing the Hamburg, Germany and Berlin and London and all that stuff, but as a result of him being on the October 27th show, he'll also be on the November 3rd show because they're doing a double taping that night. However, is Cena truly finished up with the WWE? Now Cena posted to Instagram just literally right now, posting a pic from Wolf of Wall Street and it's the moment where Jordan Belfort says he's not leaving. So is John Cena not done with WWE just yet? It'd be fantastic if he could run through to the Royal Rumble, but that probably isn't going to happen due to the actor's gill strike. Whatever the case, it's been truly wonderful to have Cena for so many dates this year, and even though it's mainly down to the strike in Hollywood, Cena could have certainly sat at home for the past few months, so he deserves credit for returning and giving back to WWE. Next up, Randy Orton getting set to return. A WWE legend Randy Orton has been out of action since May of 2022, but it looks like it's finally time for the all-time great to make his return. According to WrestleVotes on Twitter, Orton has new merchandise and branding approval, and a Survivor Series return is very likely. Regarding the Randy Orton return rumors, Source states new merchandise and branding has been approved. Also, WWE will present a large social media promotion, digital material for the comeback. It's indeed happening, likely Survivor Series or that weekend. Orton has been missed by the fan base, and his return pop is going to be rather special. Nothing has been reported when it comes to who Orton will be feuding with when he returns. When Matt Riddle was in WWE, it was expected that Orton and Riddle would feud with each other, but it's obviously this can no longer happen. Who would you like to see Orton feud with when he returns? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, a fired AEW name finds a new home. A Steel, who was fired from AEW a number of months ago, looks to have a new home. Steele, who was fired from AEW for his involvement in the CM Punk chaos, looks to be working in Pac Wrestling Bound for Glory show tonight as a producer. According to PW Insider, the role is strictly on a trial basis, but if Steele impresses during his tryout, then he's likely to be hired on a full-time basis. Tonight's Bound for Glory will emanate from Chicago, and matches set for the show include Alex Shelley vs Josh Alexander for the world title, and Trinity vs Mickey James for the women's title. And finally, a WWE legend urging Sting not to retire. Our final story today examines a recent comment from WWE Hall of Famer Booker T who made some interesting remarks when it comes to Sting's retirement. This week on AEW Dynamite, Sting announced that he'd be retiring in 2024 after a career that has spanned almost 40 years. Booker responded to Sting's announcement on his Hall of Fame podcast and despite Booker believing that Sting's retirement is long overdue, he's concerned that Sting may be lonely if he retires and he subsequently urged him not to retire. I'm glad for him, I'm glad he's finally gonna hang it up and be able to, you know, move on to what's next. You know what, 65, you know, that's like senior citizen, AARP stuff, man, grandpa stuff. I don't know, man, it's mixed emotions, you know, because I think he's retiring. I th it's gonna be great, but I think it's something, honestly, that's well overdue. To have done this thing your whole life and then you walk away from it, you know, it's hard to walk. I'm gonna tell you right now, he may not wanna retire. He might wanna just say, man, I'm just, you know, I ain't gonna say I'm never gonna retire. I might just want to walk away and leave the business, but retire? I wouldn't say that because I'm going to tell you now, sitting at home, becoming an old man, receding, it can get lonely. I say stay in the ring, Sting. Don't retire, don't quit, don't ever quit. That's what wrestlers do. That's just, that's me. That's my opinion on it. I wouldn't retire if I was you, Sting. I would stay in the ring forever. Take bumps, fly off stuff. What do you think of Booker T's comments? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.